What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the show and today we're having a little bit of fun with our front brake. Are you out there on a beginner bike or maybe you're on a cheap bike here like this KLR650 and you realize that your front brake feels like, let's call it charitably, two pieces of wood squeezing a block of cheese. That's more or less what the KLR650 feels like and there are a bunch of options you can go through to improve the brake feel. One, you could start by bleeding your brake fluid. Adding some better quality brake fluid than what's in the master cylinder could give you some better results. You could also go ahead and add new pads. Bedding down a new set of pads can improve your feeling at the lever, but you never know. Then there's the nuclear option, putting a brand new master cylinder on your motorcycle. Each one of these increases in price, they also increase in complexity, and we're gonna test out all three individually and see whether or not one of these is the key to improving the front brake feel on your motorcycle. Okay, folks, let's address our current surroundings, shall we? Things might be looking a little bit different in today's video, and that is because we're actually in my garage. I never thought I'd actually say those words, but this space right here is actually the garage attached to the house that I just signed a mortgage on. So this place is going to be the new home of Spite's Corner, and I have to say thank you guys for basically allowing me to do this. Because of you helping me, I can actually pay my half of a mortgage, uh, and I never really thought that this day would come. Here we are. But let's talk about how we're gonna actually test this stuff. First of all, I'm gonna take the KLR out in its stock form. I have not bled the brakes on this motorcycle in the year that I've owned it. Then once we get back, we're gonna bleed the front brakes. We're gonna go back out, see if there's any major difference. Then we'll come back, put the new pads on, and we're going to do the whole shebang. I'm going to clean the rotor. I'm going to bed the pads down. I'm gonna do everything that people say you should do when you put new pads in to improve the braking feel. And then finally, we are going to go nuclear with this Magura master cylinder. I've put these on a couple of different motorcycles and I gotta tell you, they feel really, really nice. But is it worth the $100 that this costs or maybe even more for a slightly upgraded unit? Let's find out today. Okie dokie pokies, we are officially in probably the best place to uh, test brakes, a empty road. So if I were to hop on the brakes on the KLR here, the first thing that I would have to tell you is that it just does not feel very good. Now, why does brake feel matter? Well, it matters because it's telling you what's happening at the wheel. If you don't know what's happening at the wheel, especially on a motorcycle that doesn't have ABS like this, you're not really going to know whether or not you need to modulate, whether or not you're at the edge of your threshold of braking, whether or not the tire's starting to slip. You're not really gonna feel what the bike is telling you. You learn a lot about what your bike is doing based on how the brakes feel. And again, I'm going about 42 miles an hour here. If I jam on the brakes, I don't really know where that threshold is. Now, I'm pretty used to using the front brake on this motorcycle, so I'm, I understand a little bit, but I still want, I want that real feel out of the lever. So let's get back to the garage and let's put some new fluid in here and see if it improves, shall we? Bleeding your brakes is a super simple process and it takes only a few minutes to get it done right, especially if you're dealing with a bike as simple as a KLR650. First things first, pop off the cover of your master cylinder and give it a look-see. You want to see clear fluid, anything else and it's time to replace it. Start by hooking up a bleeder bottle to the valve and then crack it loose. Squeeze your lever, close the valve, release the lever. Sounds easy enough? Good! Now do that until all of the air and dirty fluid comes out. You want to see that same clear color in your hose as you do in your master cylinder. Don't forget to occasionally top off that master cylinder too, otherwise you'll pull air into your brake lines and have to start the whole process over. 
All right, now at our little test track again, I can tell you for a fact that this is not the smoking gun, the magic bullet that we wished it would be because spending $12 on a jug of brake fluid is way cheaper than spending $40 on a set of new brake pads. However, the reality is if you're changing your brake fluid, it's more going to solve the problem of a soft and mushy lever it's not going to suddenly make your lever feel brand spanking new. So if you're one of those folks who's basically left their lever completely unattended for, you know, a solid few months, then yes, change your brake fluid. If it's gotten all mushy and you've got some water in it, you've got some leaking, it's been a year or two since you've actually checked it, I highly recommend that you go out and check and change your brake fluid. It's very easy. It only takes about 10 minutes. Let's see, get up to about 45 and then come to a quick stop. Yeah, I mean, the lever still feels pretty dang wooden. It's not, it's not improving the feel. It's not allowing me to really understand what's happening at the lever it is however giving me a little bit of extra i guess confidence knowing that the lever isn't going to get all squishy on me so let's go back to the garage and swap out those brake pads and see if that's going to get the job done before we dive into swapping pads let me take a quick second to preach the good word about quad lock i've used all kinds of motorcycle phone mounts in my time and quad lock is hands down the best their cases are sleek yet offer great protection for your magic space brick when you inevitably drop it. Their mounting system is easy and intuitive and you get their entire array of cool accessories. Whether it's wireless charging heads, vibration dampeners, or my personal favorite, the phone poncho which keeps your phone dry in the wet, they've got the right tool for the job. They don't just do motorcycle gear either. Check out their whole line of products for in your car, on your bicycle, in your boat, or around the house. All the information is down in the description below and a huge shout out to Quadlock for supporting the channel. Now let's swap out those brake pads. So a brake pad swap is a bit more involved. On fancy bikes you don't have to take the caliper off, but on the KLR 650 you need to pull the whole caliper, then pull a pair of pins, and then reinstall the new pads. Thankfully, there's only one to deal with on this bike, but honestly, it's not that tough a job, especially if you're a student of YouTube University. Spraying the rotor with some brake cleaner can help get some of the old brake pad material or other debris off the rotor and make sure that the new pads are biting into metal. Then finally, the process of bedding down a set of brake pads makes it so that your new pads and old rotors are mated up and working as best they can. This takes a little bit more time because you have to brake from slow speeds all the way up to high speed panic stop style braking to make sure that they're working well and you have to let the pads and rotors cool between stops. Now it's time to see if all of this work has made the difference we're looking for. There is definitely, definitely an improvement in having properly bedded brakes. Um, you know, it's not that the manufacturer doesn't do it, but there's just, there's such a nice, uh, extra bite out of the brakes. However, it hasn't solved my issue at the lever. It doesn't feel like the lever is telling me necessarily what's going on. I'm just knowing what's happening because I've ridden this bike for a year. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Nice light touches is all I need to really bite down now. I'm getting great bite out of these pads. <laughs> that feels great. However, it has not solved the problem of my lever feeling kind of numb. I really do feel like I got to just yank the crap out of it to really know what's going on. So let's get back in and do that last mod. Let's put the Magura Master Cylinder on here and see if that once and for all can improve the brake feel. Replacing your master cylinder is probably where you ought to start if you're looking to improve your lever feel. It takes a lot longer, but you're guaranteed to get better results. This Magura master cylinder has a bigger bore, meaning that you move more fluid, and it's also a more sophisticated unit than the ancient relic of a master cylinder that the stock KLR650 comes with. One benefit of going for this straight away is that you don't have to worry about bleeding the brakes twice, which is nice. Just drain the old system, unbolt the old master cylinder, pop 
pop the new one on. And when you're reinstalling everything, make sure that the new master cylinder has the proper clearance so that everything moves the way it should. That's the one issue with universal parts. They don't tend to mate up perfectly the first time. You may need to fidget with the brake line placement, your throttle cables, or in my case, the bark busters. Once you're done, bleed the brakes, making sure that you can get rid of all of the air that you've introduced in the system, and then you're good to go. Alrighty, so we are now out here with the Magura master cylinder on the motorcycle. This took a little bit more work than any of the other two options. And the reason why is pretty simple. It's <laughs> replacing a whole big chunk of the bike. And uh, your front brakes are pretty goddamn important on your motorcycle. And holy cow, does the Magura feel like a $100 master cylinder. It feels great. Now there's a couple of things to point out about this Magura that are different than the stock master cylinder. Obviously the piston is going in the same direction as the output. On the uh, stock master cylinder, the fluid actually hangs a right. Uh, it starts going this way and then it has to get pushed out that way. That's not great for uh, good feel. It, it works, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't feel great. Unfortunately, what that does mean is that there's a couple of clearance issues that you are going to have to deal with when you decide to install something like this. But you know what? Clearance issues, that's kind of what happens when you install any universal part. The last thing I will mention right now as we're rolling on this deserted road. In fact, I'm going to pull over and show you guys. Oh, that front brake though feels so good. This right here is my front brake light cables. Uh, there is no switch in this from stock. I actually have a switch on the way. It just did not make it in time for me to film this. So technically, this motorcycle is not road legal. So if you're going to go ahead and install something like this, make sure you have a switch to go in here. This Magura 225 or 225 or whatever it's called, uh, it uses a quarter inch thread and uh, Magura actually is out of them right now. They're all on back order, so I had to go find a different one, but uh, I've got one on the way. Again, it's just worth pointing out if you're going to do this, uh, you need to make sure you got the right parts. Now let's head back to the garage and wrap this whole saga up. Okay, so we've tested new brake fluid, we've tested new and freshly bedded brake pads, and then lastly, we tested a brand new master cylinder. I will point out that we did not test fresh lines. A lot of people out there are going to say that I should have gone with stainless steel lines if I was gonna do all this work. And yes, I probably could have. However, I think that running stainless steel lines for most people is not actually going to give you the benefit that you think it does because most of you guys have ABS. That means that your brake line has to go from the master cylinder to the ABS unit and then back. If you have a direct line from your master cylinder to your brakes, like I do on this KLR, then sure, you are gonna get some benefit out of having those stainless steel lines. But for most folks, it's not really gonna make that big a difference. Now, the bleeding of the brakes did a little bit. It was basically like refreshing the equipment that was already there. It made what was on here work slightly better. It was not the catch-all that I would have wanted it to be because it's so god dang cheap to do brake fluid. It takes like 10 minutes and it would have been a really simple one and done. However, you really started to see benefit when you got to the pads. By putting in fresh pads on here and bedding them down correctly, you do start to see a lot more initial bite. However, it's not gonna change your lever feel. If your lever still feels mushy and flat, you're not going to get fresh lever feel with new pads. If you really want that really great communicative lever feel, unfortunately you are looking at getting a new master cylinder. Don't simply put a new lever on your existing master. That's not gonna do anything. By switching your master cylinder, that's where you actually see some real benefit. Now, last question I wanna ask here is, is this worth it? Is it worth it for somebody to go out and do all this work? For me, 
Yes. However, if you're the average rider out there who doesn't really care about getting the ultimate performance out of their parts, which is kind of ironic when you consider that I put it on a KLR 650. But anyway, if you're looking for just normal wear and tear use on your bike, you don't need a big fancy master cylinder. Just bleed your brakes and put new pads in it if it starts feeling funky. But if you are planning on keeping your bike, you wanna take it to the track more often, you want it to really be communicative, then yeah, it is actually gonna be worth it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, with that, I'm gonna call it a day. I've been sweating my butt off in this garage because I don't have a fan or air conditioning or anything like that, and it's been a hot one. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go sit in a cold shower, and I'll catch you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.